been snowing all week. Got the Kennedy Composites Elf. Little discus launch glider. Beautiful bird. We'll check the glide anyway. Get over here behind the trees. Got a bit of a north breeze. Not bad. Check controls. Center of gravity is good. Touch nose heavy, actually. Which is a good way to start out with the plane. Wow, it's a floater. So, this is my first DLG. Discus launch glider. I think it's going to become a daily flyer. Let's give that another little test glide here. Work controls a bit. So that sticks off right there. Might need a touch of down trim. Let's do it with the sub trims. That's how I zeroed the rudder. Gotta see which way is down. It's be convenient. I'll just park this in a snowbank and look at the tail surfaces. Okay, that's up. five clicks test that out I am ready for winter to be done this is April and the saying I just heard this year after you see your first Robin up here in northern Wisconsin they get snowed on three times and the worst part of it is I saw some robins early this no last week so this is the second time they've been snowed on hands off oh it's beautiful perfect all right ready for a launch but I got a little breeze coming this way I think I should do my first discus launch downwind and then it's not enough room to operate if I go out past the trees get out in the open field got a north wind I'll be exposed to so got the guide set anyway That was what you call, I'm ready for winter to be over and want to get out and fly. This is the ELF discus launch glider. I purchased it from Kennedy Composites. It's a, another example of ARFs that are available on the market today from a standpoint of price, performance, um, construction, materials, the weight, the workmanship on the model. You'd be hard pressed to build something that looked this good and perform like this one should. It has a 39.4 inch wingspan carbon fiber tail boom, ABS plastic pod with a removable nose cone. The tail feathers are lightweight foam reinforced with carbon fiber spars wrapped with fiberglass and vacuum bag. That method makes for very lightweight, thin, strong tail feathers that are very responsive. Very good.
good um, reaction to control inputs. This model utilizes their AG series of airflow designed by MIT's Dr. Drela. And from what I could tell by the test guides I did, it has the rare combination of being a floater that penetrates well. Very thin airflow. It's D-box construction. The D-box is um, carbon fiber, has vertical grain balsa shear webs, ribs and trail and edges, carbon fiber reinforced. And it's beautifully covered in aura cover. So very lightweight, strong construction. It has 28 thousandths diameter carbon fiber rods running through guides. They're connected with music wire and heat shrink tubing. The rudder has a fiberglass control horn and it has a full flying stabilizer. This is not a stock nose cone for this model. This is a fiberglass nose cone I've made for it. Here's the original nose cone, ABS plastic. I've laid up a fiberglass nose cone that swells out about an eighth inch on the sides. And it's about an eighth inch thicker. This nose cone is made from a single layer of two ounce cloth. And I use the MAS epoxy resin. The Moss series of resins comes out really nice and hard and strong and this only weighs one tenth of an ounce heavier than a stock nose cone. It has a slightly thicker cross section. For the advantages I gain, I'm not concerned with what I'm losing in aerodynamics. The nose cone is held on with a piece of tape. And here are the advantages I gain with the slightly enlarged nose cone. I can run a larger battery and I didn't have to go to sub micro servos, just using micro servos. It's also a whole bunch easier to work with trying to stuff all this inside of here. Very interesting um, build method. You cut the mounting ears off the servos, you whip them with um, thread, super glue that on, and then the servos are super glued to the carbon fiber um, tail boom fuselage. I'm running a 850 milliamp hour lithium ion um, battery, so I should have pretty much unlimited flight times. This nose cone like the stock one, engages on this front radius piece that has a flat on it. There's a flat molded on the upper half of the stock nose cone that engages the um, carbon fiber fuselage. I put a short piece of that 28 thou carbon fiber rod, drilled a hole through there, put that in my nose cone to engage it, keep this from twisting. All the electronics are such a tight fit that you even have to take off the case on the AR410 Spectrum receiver. It's inside the pod. It's up in here. And there's a bit of room between these two screws up inside the wing. I did not document building the nose cone mostly because I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but I used a really simple method. First, I wrapped this one in saran wrap, and then I built it up, just swelled it out in the middle with model fill. Once I got that, the size and shape I wanted and nice and smooth, then I also wrapped that with saran wrap, and then I laid the fiberglass one right over top of it. Won't go all the way in right now because this 
carbon fiber rod in here, but that gave me accurate engagement with the front of the fuselage and the sizing back here. After it cured overnight, I simply soaked it in a bowl of water, flexed it a bit, and the model fill broke down from the water. And then I got this fiberglass nose cone to release off of the stock one. When I say sizing, this is slightly bigger by the thickness of that um, the stock one. So I simply left it a little bit longer where it would normally stop here when it engages on the um, this right up front here, the front of that carbon fiber fuselage. It just slightly overlaps. So as far as airflow, that won't be catching, not a problem. I got perfect engagement on top of the wing. So simply push that on until it stops against the nose cone, tape it in place, ready to fly. You need to remove this before each flight just to plug in the battery. There's no switch. On Kennedy Composites website right now, they have a combo deal. $210, you get the plane and these wing covers. So I mostly wanted to share that um, nose cone idea for a couple reasons. That submicro electronics, especially the servos, are fairly spendy. And I think for most of us, yeah, it works. They're doing it. But that tight fit is a little bit frustrating to work with. I also... I'm thinking at this point after the test guides that my way of thinking anyway, I may have improved the performance of this model. Still a floater at 4.1 ounces, but my thinking is what it's going to gain in penetration is going to make it a little more capable. So that's what this um, custom nose cone lets me do and it's sure gonna be nice having 850 milliamps um, of flight time with this discus launch glider. Go out and fly it all day.